What's going down, Julie Brown? Remember that shit back of the day, Julie Brown? MTV. Downtown Julie Brown. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> What's cracking, man? Hey, it's the Blackout Podcast Special Edition here. It's one on Juan. Well, I would say Juan's. Uh, I'm the one, and that's Juan's. Um, it's your boy ODM, your mama's favorite DJ, your daddy's favorite rapper. Hey, host of the Blackout Podcast, a lot of shade of brown. Go run those numbers up. You already know. But it's not about us. It's not about me. It's about the guys to my left over here. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, the homie. Brown boy, Mr. Superman. What up, what up? What up, what up? I can tell you like no one. I can be your Superman. Hey, don't you get tired of that when motherfuckers, that's the first thing that comes out their mouth? First thing. Because it's not like you haven't done like 40 other albums after that, right? Yeah. I'm like, it, it, you get tired of the... So I'm like, I, I, I personally feel I got better songs than that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And it's like, damn, man. Like, but... It, it, you know, even with the, uh, you know, we just got back from Dallas. We did the Dallas Super Show, and, uh, you know, we, we changed up the set. We, it was really a lowrider experience show that we put on. Yeah. But, yes, we threw it in the mix real quick. And then I was like, they were like, oh, maybe a show's over. Superman's down. I was like, nah, 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 nah. We're we going to keep it going with the whole lowrider thing. So we had another song called Music to Cruise to that me and my dog did. And we run it, and they're like, oh, crap. Like, this is great. Like, but we give them a whole vibe. The whole show was a whole vibe. So, so. you do the Superman record in your show for the record? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll and put it in kinda there. In the, it's kind of in the middle. Well, well you got to go see the show, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. Type shit. Who's the, who's the gentleman to your right? What up, what up? I go by King David, a legend. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. He's already a legend, ladies already and gentlemen. Already a yes. legend. So King David, one word, underscore, a legend. Who Give coined that follow. for you? Did you come up with that yourself? or somebody I did coined? when I was younger, man. When I was younger, I always wondered what I could do with my name. Yeah. Like, damn, my name's David. Like, yeah. what am I going to do with that? I'm but like, you, wait but, a minute. But you King threw David. legend in there. That, 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 so I did. you're calling you know, yourself a legend. I, you, know, you know where it really came from uh, when I started going on Google and thinking I could show up on Google. Well, if you Google King David at any moment, you're going against every, everything biblical. Uh, You'll never show up, right? So I'm like, man, I got to put something that just just has a ring to it at the end. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, King David. I just thought about legend. I thought about a legend. I said, you know, it just has a ring to it. A little different. King yeah. David a legend. And it, it pops up. So if you Google King David a legend, you actually get some of my stuff. So. so there's, for the record, there's no other King David legends aside of, obviously, from biblical, right? So you're right. good. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's like four have, other King have. David legends yeah. popping up. I never had that. Well, I pop, pop an ODM, and it's like, there's four other ODMs out there. I think there's an ODM Slim from LA, right? Or something like that, Moons. Um, there's an... It's like a Japan one, too, fool. Is there really? Yeah. I used to Google ODM and watches. There's watches called ODM. They're oh, wow. sick out. They used to look like swatches. Remember the swatches? Yeah, I remember oh, the swatch. Yeah, yeah. But they were really dope. And I, I think they, those were also in the, I want to say in the Asian uh, countries, man. But uh, anyway, so what's good, man? How do you, how do you, how do you guys meet? Or what, what's the deal? Man, I've been I've been rocking with him for a minute now, man. I mean, this dude right here, like, you know, for a minute, for me, music, it just... Uh, how could you say like the quality? I'm I'm still big on quality. I want my stuff to sound good. I want, you know, there's that that spice that you have to have when you're when you're doing a record. I want to sound a certain way. And I got introduced to him by a certain somebody. And uh, you know, they told me all these great things about him, you know, yeah. like, oh blah, 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 blah. And so they had showed me some of their music that they had got done produced. Yeah. By him. And I was like, whoa, like this kind is of a word of mouth type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so they basically gave me the plug to him and said, hey, look at, you know, uh, I managed him or whatever, whatever their words were. At the end of the day, I got introduced to him. I said, man, can you mix some stuff or, you know, you know, he's like, yeah, I can do it all. And I was like, OK, let me shoot him a record. See, we oh, he sent it back. And my mom was like, Phew. then I that that's just mixing. Then, you know. I go to his crib because he's out of Phoenix. He's right. out of Arizona. Shout so. out to Arizona. What's up, yeah, right? Phoenix what up? 602. Phoenix, Arizona. Maryvale, what's up? But, uh, yeah, no, I just went. We sat down and immediately clicked. Uh, but the real talk is that we had conversations. We had, you know, and I was like, look, man, I'm not looking in the game to, you know, how could you say, like, I just I just want to make music. I want to have fun. And, yeah, and, you want to expl explore. Yeah. And so, no, we sat down and we just vibe. It was like so many things that we had in common and we just clicked up and from there we just 
kept working and this dude's a genius you know what i'm saying he he can build computers from the ground up he mixes he uh sings uh he raps i mean he songwrites. you're like a one-man band oh just, uh, listen my head's about to Stop hey, air, you got to live up to your name, air, dog. Yeah, you got to live up true. to King, dog. That's what I tell people all the time. They say it. it's a strong name, King that's David, what... and a legend at the same time. You yeah. Know what name? That so, yeah, part. Man, so. But it just, it's just been journey, good man. vibes. You know what I'm saying? You got to be, you know, for me to do music again, it was just like, you know what I'm saying? Ah, man, it's not as crispy or the... You know, hey, 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 all that stuff that that I want to hear That's that called all an the echo. big people do. He's an echo. Huh? <laughs> hey, hey. I'm gonna correct the both. It's actually a delay. I don't know. Actually, what I was gonna say. Pretty old school. I, but. I always try to figure out the difference between an echo and delay. What's your <laughs> definition? But I haven't seen any uh, plugins that really that have echo, echo, unless it's a nickname. You know what I mean for a plugin. But they're usually all delays. What I Okay. What I run into, you know what I mean? I want to say it's on Logic. I, no, I see probably, Echo every now and then. Is, and it, I, like what I see is like nicknames of certain brands of like different VSTs and plugins. It'd be like an Echo too. Or I, I can't even think of a name, but I usually see delay. But for it's it is an Echo, right? It's, it really is. They, well, I mean, they kind of go in. They coincide with each other, right? They they're kind of the same. But just yeah. delay happens to be the the correct term, like you said, yeah. for yeah. recording, right? Yeah. Sure. And That's echo what I is here, you know? as if you're on but, but when they're top like, of the hey, mountain. I need that screwed. echo right there. Oh, I got you. Let's put this. Dude, <laughs> you, you wouldn't Don't say you somebody that. That. That's on top of a mountain. Yo. <laughs> Yo, say your name loud and let it delay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> delay it. You're like, what? Yeah. It's That's funny. what's up. But so, he does all the tricks. Like, you know, the tricks in the mix and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was big on that. So for a minute, I would just I wasn't into music. And and there and it takes me to a time when I was reaching out to you. I was like, yo, we gotta do something. And I understand now. And I'm like, man, I went through that phase where I'm like, I don't even want to do music no more. Like, this is crazy. Like the way it is is just so different. Right. You know, and uh, he brought me back to having fun and uh, just to create. And anytime I'd come up with a hook or a song and I knew that I could give it to him and he would he would do the magic. So I was like, man, this is crazy. So we literally just sat there and just ran through songs and just doing them and doing them. And it, it was crazy. And so I now like he was I hyped got, about you, yeah, dog, by I the way. Hyped. He had been hitting me that. all last yeah. week and a half. Yo, my boy, my boy, <laughs> yeah, my boy, he, you need absolutely. something for the shade. Yo, my yeah. boy, you need something for the brown royal. I'm like, all right, dog, we 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 gonna get it in. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like yeah. I, I I can't wait to, to you know hear, hear what I, I, I want I want yeah, I, I want the are, thing is is that like I always tell him he even right now is crazy because like you know I don't care, you know, I, I hook him up. Like, I go to people, whatever. I'm like, okay, look it. You hear his stuff. Like, some some cats, like, just... In a, I, I don't want to say that they can't rap, but I feel like when they when I bring him to him, say, hey, look it, they're willing to pay this, hey, blah, 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 and he does it, I think that the artists themselves, when they get their stuff back, they're like, is it's me? Like, yeah, that's you. That's the mix and everything. That's, like... They like I feel like they've never heard their sound sound so good, right? And they're it's like crack. Like, oh, can I get another one? Or how that's how I, like, you felt. That's yeah. what your response was when you got your mix back from him. Yes, like compared to fire. a lot of other producers that you've worked with throughout so many years. Yeah, and the thing was is it's like fingers. Well, yeah, fingers. I've I've done Shots work with fingers. fingers, and fingers like to me, like I said, it's still to me because I, I've you. I'm t we're going back how many years? Yeah, you know. To, to fingers like when you go and you go, you know, where was it off of a Green River back yeah. in the days? We used to go to the studio right there, Flossie's. Crib I think he and, was using digital performer. Does he still use? Yeah, that? yeah. I want to yeah. say that's what it was. Okay, yep. that's what's up. He that's old school, man. Too. That's as old school as like Cubase. Yeah, he's. I remember those days. We're talking nineties, you know. And in and, and even with that, like it's a trip. I don't know if I told the story, but you know, uh, you know, a lot of people think fingers produce Superman. And so, and, and he didn't. He co he did some sounds. Oh, word? Yes. Who produced it? Uh, this guy named Victor. He's from Blythe. And so the whole story with that, man, it's just a crazy story. I went, homie was like, you know, I was looking for tracks. The Superman song alone was already written. You know, I had wrote it, but I didn't have a beat to rap on. And it, like I said, it, it, next year, 2025, is going to be 20 years. Right. So... And that's, that's a whole other story we got. But the dude was living at a place, went there. He was just showing me stuff. I took the I took the track on a CD. I was like, that's it. And I was like, he played it. And 
He did he did guitar back then too and he just really gave it to me on a CD. So what I'm curious now, what did Superman sound like before you gave it to Fingers? Do you have that somewhere? Um, I don't, but I just know that I took that CD, we plugged it in at Fingers and he you know, he ran it through as a track. And then Man, added, how dope would that be to hear the original verse? You don't have it anywhere on a hard drive or uh, anywhere. Pro- probably not. Maybe That'd finger. You know what I'm saying? That like to do it before yeah. and after type shit. Yeah. Because you said fingers played guitar on it. No, no, no. He didn't know the dude that produced the beat knew how to play guitar. Oh, he was okay. a guitar player, but it was just like I said, simplistic. It didn't have the ooh, ooh, ooh. like when you hear Superman. To me, that's that ooh, ooh. That's fingers. You know, he played the ooh. ooh okay. And there was like a couple more sounds that he added to it. So. At the end of the day, you know, when I got signed and it, it, it and it's crazy because it all goes like the whole story full circle is like Cliff Ritchie, you know, used to uh, manage you guys. Yeah. Right. That's the shade. Right. Who I ran into and, you know, kind of told me a story. Woo woo, And then he brought it, you know, he brought me to Peasterman or whatever. Right. And that's where the record got taken over right there. That's when he said, hey, I'm going to come in. Woo woo woo. So it is. A, but when we did the splits at the end. Yeah. Like, we like it's a record label. They're gonna know. Like, well, he, and so it was like they try to get like I guess like Flossie like try to get like a percentage or whatever. Right. I I didn't know nothing back then. I'm just was happy to be like. Oh, what year you know? did you record Superman? Dang, was it 05, I think. Was it? Yeah, it's, yeah. I think it was like it was 05. Released in 05. Yeah, it was released in 05. Dang, so 04 probably. Yeah, so 20 years ago. And you recorded it at Fingers Green Green River. Wow, like, yeah. what a trip, what a trip. Because so, I remember playing it on 99.1 when I was, you know, radio DJ, and, and that shit was, I mean, I think Fingers at the time was on a, on a spree of hits. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. At that time, right? He, I mean, he had the little Rob Summer Nights. I don't know if that came before or after. That, I think it was after. But, because Upstairs was going to sign me. Okay. And they passed on me. And when they passed on me, that's when Peasterman picked up. Because at that time, Upstairs had, what, Amanda Perez, uh, I believe they had Gemini. Um, they had Upstairs? Little Rob. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know they signed Amanda Perez. Yeah, but yeah, I believe they did. Some, yeah, because they did a Pet Bull remix to Candy Kisses, I believe, something Ooh, like that. Okay. So they were they was doing it. So we shot it to uh, John. Right. And uh, and I remember somebody that was there with them at the even John. I mean, John. I'm still cool with John. You mm-hmm. know, I talked to him and yeah, that was one record I passed on. But you know, even with Peasterman doing it, John probably knew. What he could do with it, and he said, "Look, at man, if we would have did a video at that, oh, you'd be on a whole other level." So you wait, hold on. You never did a video for never Superman, did a video. bro. You it's need to do that shit video. now. Oh no, it's it's in the works. Yeah. It's okay. already in the works. All so right. we have right now for the twenty year anniversary that whole album that 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 fingers produced, the Living Shady. So I got Living Shady two point So you got Please Don't Go got redone. Uh, Let's ride. I told you about that one. Let's ride. Um, Superman, and, and when we release it, it's going to be multiple different Superman. So you got the Superman acoustic with uh, Coda. Coda's doing that. Uh, we, Me and Coda did that. We got a Shout reggaeton Shout out to Coda. Ver- what up, Coda? Yes, sir. Uh, we did a reggaeton version. We did a, a street version. It's more of a harder version, which is like, you know, but it's, you, when you when the fans hear it, we got a house mix too, yeah. like which is crazy. Like I could love you, like can can I can be dan, dan, and you're like whoa, it's that fist so, pumper. Yeah, so we it's just a whole twenty it's like year anniversary. reviving the whole song. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. That's a dope concept. And the video's coming. So. What, who was the label? Was it that Superman uh, was originally on then? Aries Music. Air, where are they out of? Um, L. A. They write off. LA. So what kind of distribution did that? Because you were on the you were all over the. Who got you? Play it on radio. And it goes back to full circle. Sam. Sam Hernandez. Sam Hernandez. Sam Hernandez worked all the LSOB records. That, and that, so how, like, how great to me, like, when I look at life and I look at, dang, I made it in the music because I was going to college, you know. And then who I was, you know, I was listening to 991. Yeah. That's when I used to pull up on, oh, like, like hey, hey, bring, hey. Uh, bring Which it. I want to go back to because. I mean, all right, we, we we did the Superman thing, but I, let's since we're on it, let, let's let's go back to when you used to pull up to the station. And that was like two thousand one, two thousand two, right? You yeah, you would pull up. Brown boy had like this white Lexus, right? Yeah, my boy was like, man, came up and he would like he pulled up with his. Uh, I just remember one time he came through 
and you had your whole CD book. Remember the CD books? You have all your CDs in there? And he was like, yo, oh, man, I'm telling you, bro. I grew up on your shit, man. Look, and it was all like you had every single lighter shade of brown single, not just the albums, the singles, all fucking prettied up right there, bro. That shit was dope. And then and that was just the CD case. I had the cassettes, the records at home. Yeah. And then, uh, then I, then I, then I got jacked. Do you remember when I got jacked? I think I think you remember. Yeah, remember telling me that. Laughlin, fool, Loughlin. we was over there trying to party, oh, shit. and then we got snatched up. Was yeah, it? we brought we brought some you know some peeps to the room and stuff. It's, I mean, it's years back, but I'm just that's what happened. We was in Laughlin. We like together. We were yeah Loughlin? with Bobby. Remember, that's the first day I met Bobby. Is when you swooped me up. Would you have the uh, navigator? Right. The navigator swooped me up. We went to Laughlin and did a show. We had a show out there. Yeah, and Bobby was like, "Who's this fool? Whatever." It's like, "Oh, it's a Brown Boy." Whatever. Da, da. And he was like, "What you got in your CD case? What we gonna bump? Whatever." Woo woo. And I gave it to him. He was like, "Oh, oh, this." Hey, he got everything. Da, da, da. And I remember that night we did the show. I was with you guys. We went back to the room. We was trying to kick it with some people. And then someone said, swoop. And there no goes my way. CD. Yeah. That was the day, the same day they snatched all my stuff. So I was you like, probably got one of them rats off the river, came in the room, <laughs> and snatched that shit. <laughs> yeah, river rat. Oh, uh, river rat. I was like, where's my like CDs at? We looked river around. Rat. I was like, river was rat. Gone. A lawfully river rat. Uh, it was all gone. But yeah, man, it was a good old days, man. Damn, I don't even remember that, bro. I mean, I used to go to Laughlin <laughs> a lot back in those days. I mean, still haven't stopped, but I mean, we pulled an old night. Gotham's, once. Gotham's nightclub. Dog. Yeah. Hey man, it's live. Bobby, live magazine. Shh. David. Hey, we man. So I was, you know, I was like, and it was crazy because then at a certain point in time, like I said, I would it started with me calling the station first. That's how we clicked. And I'm like, right. yo, da 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 da. But then I told you, and then that's when we did Brown Pride. So Brown Pride actually came before Woo! Superman. You know what I'm saying? I did it for, for the, the Brown, Brown Pride. Pride. I did it for the homies He's in, in the, the low, low ride. ride. I did it for the people on, on the, the streets. streets. Some cruising, cruising up down and down, down with them badass, badass beats. beats. Yeah, uh. that was an ODM production, right? Yo, there, so a boy. lot of people don't know. I mean, maybe you do if you're diehards. Brown Boy and I, we we got a few records out, right? Yeah, let's ride. Let's ride. Um, we did one, taking it back. We right. got a song called Taking yeah. It Back. Um, and then we got Baby Boo. Fingers did that, and then we got Let's Ride. I don't Fingers remember did Baby that Boo. Too. Oh shit! You, with Melissa Lujan. Did I we rap just on talking that about? Shit? Yeah, man, I don't you and Bobby that. too. Oh, I got, I gotta, I gotta hear that song, yeah. man, for sure. You can be my baby, and fingers doing it, and her doing it. Yeah, I remember the let's let's ride. Probably my favorite, bro. West. And we did another one though. We did another one. Uh, I think Salas produced it. Hey, you know what's funny about Brown? I'm gonna put you on, but I'm gonna put your ass on. Point right. <laughs> Brown would always hit me up. Hey, oh, what's up? Hey, dog, I got another record for I was like, man, we just did one like, man, you know. Come. Yeah, dog, but this is my last one, dog. I swear. <laughs> I'm closing it up, dog. I, I'm, 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 bro, too. this is going to be my last one. Bro. I just want to have something to history. Bro, you know, I was like, all right, cool, Brown. Let's do another one. So we did another one. Fucking two, a year, two years later saying, hey, yo, I'm closing shop, bro. This is my last record. <laughs> I'm my good. Right. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got my family. You know, I'm, I'm just chilling. This moment could just. I ain't gonna lie, that was a conversation on the way up here. You know what I'm saying? I'm planning it all out. That's after a couple of albums we talked about, and he's like, yeah, after that. I think we got like, I think like real talk, like we, me and this cat, like just working, working. Like I probably got in my computer probably about four to five albums, like songs. That's why every Friday, if you go to my page, I'm dropping a new song. I just dropped that new one with the YB and Mr. Shadow. Right. Um, I'm just dropping every week. That's That's a remake, right? I heard. Yeah, something to write to. Got Conscious it, got Daughters. It. Yeah. That's so, hard. you know, and I just like, you know, I like to mess with everybody. You know what I'm saying? I, I just, that's that's what's crazy about the music right now is just that, like, I'm just really a, a, a fan of just doing dope music, vibing out. Uh, you know, I got a, I got a record with uh, King Lil G and Lil Easy E. Um, and you would think Superman, he's going to rap hard or like, nah, nah, there's, I can do, I'm versatile. And that's, that's one thing that I learned, you know, even about the shade was like the first time seeing you guys in Indio, California right? at the Indio fair. And I, I go back, I can remember it like hippity hop, what hippity hop, locos, loco. And I was just like, wait, what is this? Because I was so used to, which, I, you know, I was cool with the, the night owls, the shadows, the little ones. Right. That's what you listen to. 
you know, and even the shadow one, the big one for me, six one nine to the yeah. nine oh nine, like yeah. that thing, bang! I, that was repeat, dog. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? So stuff like that, but to actually see, um, you know, Mexicans up there, you know, doing hip hop. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't right. hard. It was hip hop, and I was like, yo, and that's when I tuned in, and I was like, yo, this is crazy. I went back, bought all the albums, and like I said. To this day, I, I, like people, I guess they don't want to give people their flowers, like type stuff. It's like, I don't know if it's an ego thing, but I could still to this day say, like, like people, like, well, who, you know, who'd you influence? Of course, Frost, but Lighter Shade, Key Sweat, yeah. you know, like, I, I'm still like, I like the, you know, Joe C's and stuff like that. Man, the good but shit. Good R&B. The hip hop, you know, was like, that was Lighter Shade, you know? So that's why I, Got the club fed, all these records, you yeah. know what I'm saying? The song with Tony, 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 all them stuff. Like, I was big on that. That was like repeat for me. But I also had, you know, I threw in a little bit of Night Owl, a little bit of right. this, a little of that. But that was, that's why I grew up on it. And San Diego I, rap was big back then. Oh, I mean, big. that I, that's the first I had heard of Chicano rap was from San Diego. It wasn't yeah. here. It wasn't, you know, before Capone's and, and the high power movement and all that. It was San Diego based. And, yeah. and, and then, Aside of uh, can't forget about Spanish Fly Harbor area. Yeah, can't forget about Norwalk's. You know, wanted Norwalk's wanted most wanted, most wanted. or something like that. Royal and, and all the other low groups profile. That, that, yeah, and they they was all around, and um, but that was really Chicano's underground. But they were on the rise. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then the whole Chicano rap scene came out. But it was it was hip hop. You you hit it right on the button, man. The and then at we that time too, at that time too, you know, cause just, you know, just on another note, um, I think even on that album, I do have a song with, uh, the NB riders that I'm yours that, uh, we had did also, I think with Angelina, remember Angelina? Yeah. She had sang on that and, and I linked up, I got to meet through zigzag. I've known zigzag for years, but I linked with him. And I just kept in contact with that cat to the point where he introduced me to like Gemini and stuff like that. But it's always kind of been around on like my albums and stuff like that. Yeah. And so it's just a hit, like a whole thing, you know, getting to meet magic and stuff like that. All that stuff. Like I was that dude that listened to everything. And that's why I like to be here in this position 20 years later. And like, I'm still doing shows. I'm still getting royalties. I'm still getting paid. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, the game has changed. There's mm. a lot of different things. There's a lot of uh, greed, ego. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in the game. And But that's why I said before I started working with him, I, the first, what's the first thing I told you? I, I, I want to build a relationship. relationship. Yeah. I mean, my wife kicks it with his wife. My son kicks it with his son. We go out. We make – when we do a trip, it's like we're older now. We're grown, so – yeah. Family stuff, you know what I'm saying? And I concentrate on that. Other than that, if you want to work with me, that's cool. I'm not, I'm not, I don't come to people and ask them like, oh, I need free verses or nothing like that. I just, I appreciate anybody that wants to work with me and get down on some creative stuff and just make some magic. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's what it's about. You're out of Blythe, California, right? Yeah. 100%. So I, I haven't heard of any other artists from Blythe. Don't come for me. Maybe there's new artists. Any other rappers come out of Blythe? Nah. I mean, there's some, you know, and uh, which which is the sad part is that that is my hometown, and I've always represented that. People are like, hey, where are you from? All the time, where you you from L.A.? Like I was just in Dallas. Hey, show me your placas. We LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, well, you know, they were saying some names, and I'm I'm sure I'm assuming it's gang names or whatever, and I'm like. Do I talk like a gangster? Or yeah. Like, I'm like, you know, I mean, they I just so, assume yeah, that you're yeah, you know? from L.A. But from Blythe, like, it was weird because, like, you would think, like, that's where you would get your biggest support you know, from, and it wasn't like that, which was okay. Well, it's not a very big town either. Right? Yeah, nah, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, you would think, like, you know what I'm saying, like, they were supported or whatever. So now when I go back, there's there's some artists out there yeah. that, that I do see that are from Blythe, and, and I always tell them like this, get real production. Get, like, stop getting beat star beats for 50 bucks. Like, yeah. get original Stuff, Good, get your stuff mixed and stuff like if if you're if you believe in yourself that right. much, then spend money on yourself. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? These, you know, I'm I'm not gonna tell you like, you know, I like to hit King up and, and King like, yeah, come through. I felt like I got love. Like I, I um 
he's done a couple records for me, but I felt like, you know, I got love on what he came through, said, hey, come through to my house, you know, and I was like, damn, King Lil G, I'm like, walk up, you know, like walking up to a mansion and stuff, and you're like, but always the same energy with him. What's up, my right. dog? Like, cool as hell. Yeah. Cool. And he has his, and you know what, being in there in the studio with him was a trip because um, he does his stuff a certain way. It He really brings a different like the way he does his stuff, it's just like I'm like, yo, that's crazy. He really just he the way he records, the way everything, it's like he wants everybody out. Just me and you, my G. Like, you know, and we sat there, we chopped it up, and he just starts, you know, in his head. And yeah. Then he gets to busting and it's like, Well, I oh. think it I think it should be that way. Because yeah. you don't want too many distractions. Come on, bro. We did that shit back in the day. You know, I had the Brown Royal Studios. And we had girls, there. 30, the dudes, homies, partying, yeah, drinking yeah. mozzellos. By the, the, the time everybody left, I was fucking throwing away bottles and fucking all kinds of shit. But it's like you get more done without no distractions. Now, unless I'm writing a rap about a female, you know, females or groupies, or I used to call them, and they was in the room, then I get inspired a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Ambrosia and I, we did that, my main I thing. I remember that. And it was just her and I till 4 o'clock in the morning in the studio. And we I just, remember Ambrosia. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I... I so I can see why King Little G would would you know would would do that. I mean, this is business. Like you, me, and David were were just vibing right now. Be, yeah. You know, say before we we popped on here, and we was we was were listening to a track, and it was just us. Let's vibe together. You know what I'm saying? So I, I hear you on that. And it was it was cool because I I was like I tripped out like you know la, the the time before that he had went to Sala Studio, recorded one for me. This time to reach out to him he was like yeah come through we chopped up business woo woo woo. And then I told him I said hey my son got you know he's doing beats too and he you know and and like my son is crazy because you have to like when I go to shows and like I'm like that person wasn't even born when this record Superman came out, but they know it word for word. They know other songs. And it was like my son, like I kind of like they show them this stuff. So when the stuff I listen to and stuff like that, he's trip. He's like, you know, he's a fan of certain people. Yeah. So, he, you know, and to for how for him to help me, you know, he's doing beats and stuff like that. He's trying to like, I brought him into like a certain sound and he was like, what's that? I'm like, Oh, that's crystal blue persuasion. Have you ever, I never heard that, but his mind starts going and right. da, 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 and he starts thinking of stuff. And then uh, we did, uh, we just dropped Que Bonita. That was me, Big Jim and I, and my boy, uh, Jameson James. And then uh, we did the Money Moons one with YB. Shout out to Money Moons. He's over there in the corner right mm -hmm. there. Yeah, yeah. Busted well, on it. Up. But him and YB, they went in on this record. My son did it. Uh, shout out to I heard that one. That was hard. Goes hard. Is it out? But it's out. Okay. But this dude, when you bring my son, he's he doesn't know how to mix. He knows how to send stamps and do this. Right. And then I bring it to the dude here. Right. And this dude just, I'm like, wait. It's a, com like, my son. And that's very important that he, we bring that up because we were just talking about that. And I've had this conversation with Sab did it. Like, there are three different jobs. Those are three different yeah. jobs. Recording, mixing, and mastering. All right. And artists need to realize that. So when you go to studios and think, all right, I'm going to pay you so much, that's going to include my mixing and mastering and everything else. Right. Some people will be like, all right, cool. Depending on, you know what I'm saying? What the situation is. But that's a three man job right there. And 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 if he's producing it, too, that's, a, that's four. And this dude. So it's good that your son yeah. knows and goes, OK, let me send it to my it's guy here because, you know, he, that's what he does. So Everybody we go, it's, it's a process. So he yeah. get like, my son would give me the beats and then I'd get the stamps. He learned how to send stamps. Then I would, I would go record at Joe's and get my vocals. Cause Joe, to me, got the crispy. You go over there, you're going to get it. He's going to take your breasts out, stuff like that. And then I get it. And then I send it to him and he started to know like, man, Joe sends me everything perfect. Like, and then he adds whatever sounds and I add echoes. He, yeah, we need to get yeah, Joe yeah. on the pod, man. Next Joe, time we see Joe, 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 where you at, Funyan? We'll be just, it'll be a back session if he what comes. What up, Joe? Oh yeah. So Joe is, well, I'll tell you little what little green. I know Joe. Little Green. I always fuck up his name. I always say Joe Green Studios or it's Little Green Studios. It, yeah, right? Little Green. Oh, yeah, little and green. Joe, it happens to be DJ Fabe Love, original Latter State of Brown DJ's brother. And their Facts. whole family is just musicians, and that's what he come from. He, he played on TJ Knights, yeah, the guitar. And and anyways, he's been uh, recording all these fools for for years, years, man. That's exactly how he would say it too. <laughs> hey, and you know what's crazy, man? He got every record 
done way back in the days. He has a CD file with your stems, like dated back that many years, bro. Yeah. They're all there. He showed, like, he showed me some stuff. He was like, hey, remember this record that you did? And I'm like, what? And that's why I was telling you, I got, like, verses from Bobby. Right. And he was, he pulled them up, and I'm like, and they're crispy, and they sent them. He like, still had, you still have verses from Bobby? Yeah. Uh, and they're in his studio. Those out, bro. Yeah. And so, uh, it's just crazy, but it is a process. It goes from him, and like I said, I've had Joe mix some of my records, and they're, they're good. I mean, it's quality. But that's why I said, I call him Mr. Sauce, so... I don't call him David or King David Legend. I call him Mr. Sauce because yeah, it's sauce. like he sauces it up. I'm just like, dude, like you hear it one way and then you give and you're like, dude, like what the and all, everything. He just it, saucy, it's saucy. It. I trip saucy. out like, you know, like us. He we was we was in the studio and sometimes I'm not even going to lie. I just be kind of like. Not I wouldn't say dozing. Not, like, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm asleep, There's but my ears times. are still awake. And he, he was go, like, I like the edit. Back and his eyes are closed, but he just had the headphones. Mobbing, and he was just like, vibing. right there, just right vibing. there, right there. Yeah. Put that drop right there. I'm yeah. asleep. I'm like, put that drop right there. My eyes are closed. And, right, right. And he's just going. I let yeah. him do what he does. I don't, I, I don't know what how he does it. I just let him do it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, Honestly, not the funnest part of music, really. It, it, I think I've said it best. Right, it's three different jobs. You really should have four. three different hats. Yeah. Four. But, you know, if you can know how to do it, do it. Save yourself some money, right? Absolutely. That's what happened to me. Is Learn like, it. I learned it. I figured it out. Then I'm like, well, started at 12. I know how to make beats, writing, singing. Then I'm like, man, now I do it all. So then you sit there and you do it. And it's like, man, it's, it's a lot of work. It's definitely a three-person job sometimes. You know what I mean? And I wish there was three of me. I think my dad says it best, man. I should have been born triplets, you know? Uh, that's right. <laughs> you know I took so, him, you know. I took him to fingers. Cause like I said, fingers to me is on for me. Like I said, I've been working with him for years. Yeah. Salas, uh, Symes Carter. Um, and then when I met him, like I said, I was like, damn, that's crazy. So a lot, a lot of the stuff too, even with Symes, you know, I get a lot of beats from Symes. I've been working with Symes for years and, and people are like, yo, like, and, but he also, Symes will send me the stamps. Symes mix is different than him. Right. So now that I'm getting like these, you're getting a bunch of brains of creativeness that can create stuff. Cause Symes also too can just create melodies and stuff like that. Hey dog, do this. And he does it. And he was like, oh, I hear this, you know, whoop, whoop, whoop. And then I send it to him. And then I go to his spot too. And it's like, dude, these dudes are just like, but it's just like I said, it's just creativeness. We like you said, what we was doing right now. But I said, fingers is, you know, let me see. Let me take them to fingers. So I did. Yeah. And we worked on some records there. And uh, yeah, man, I think fingers was just like, yo, who's this cat? But at the same time, I was allowing him to kind of hmm, yeah, pick his brain and how he does this. And we left with the talk star. I'm like, yeah. dude. I'm getting you a, you actually, you, a talk box. you actually uh, blew uh, um, Fingers' mind back once. You know, not like that. But. Whoa. <laughs> oh, buddy. I ain't going to edit that one out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bleep. Yeah. Nah, there's, there's, there's a reason why I say that, man. Check this out. I'm going to take a quick break. Come back with our brown boy, King David. Hang on. Don't go nowhere. Hey, what's up? It's ODM from the Blackout Podcast. Thanks for watching. And if you're ever seriously injured in an accident, car accident that is, or personal injury, make sure you reach out to the Munoz Lawyers, Latino-owned, and they got your back. You can call them today at 626-334-8405 or simply go to www.munozlawyers.com. Let's get back to the interview. Back with it, man. To the Blockout Podcast, we got Brown Boy King David, the legend. A legend. Uh, a legend. Hey, bro. So King uh, David, the legend. So when Brown Boy took you over the fingers, right? And you know he's scoping you out, meaning <laughs> not like that. <laughs> Here we go. I thought we, I thought we were gonna race the first hey, bro. one, but the break didn't help. Yeah, <laughs> the break, that break it out. <laughs> I, I just need to be quicker with my words. Scoping out your your music and, and the yeah. way you get down, right? What was it uh, about Fingers that he kind of got him off, off his couch a little bit, man? So, well, first of all, working with Fingers is dope. He's like, you know, he's like a scientist with the, the way he, he's fast, you know what I mean? He's fast. fast. You see him work, and I'm watching, and there's a lot of stuff I can do, but I'm not doing it as fast as him. It's tough. He's, he's got it. You know, he right. does it every single day, you know? Been doing it. Uh, so it's been amazing. It was amazing just watching him. So I think with me, you know, I was more quiet during the time. They were getting some tracks done, getting some talk box done, which he's amazing at. And uh, then it was like, hey, we need you to go in the booth, record, right? 
typically for me, I record myself. So I don't record a lot of other places. So right. I'm like, hey, let me let me get the auto tune, pull it up. He pulls it up. Yeah. You know, hey, you know, turn this knob here, turn it there, because I need it the way I want it. Right, right. right. You have your own setting, yeah. So for him, I did it. <clears throat> it's probably more of an average setting. I get in the booth and do my thing, you know, kind of go off. And um, and I said, fingers, you know, hey, you know the top left knob? Like, turn it all the way to the right, you know? And it's just one of the knobs that just makes it, makes it sound more robotic, right? Right. The way sound. I use auto-tune for me is like, I, I think I can really sing. I, I believe I can. Right. I can know how to no, hit notes. So, so then I use it properly, right? Yeah. But then I want to damage my own vocals by going ahead and ruining it in a sense. Right. You know, turning it up and using it improperly, but then being able to vo- adjust to my vocals. like noticeable. Like, yeah, man, absolute hundred percent. all auto-tune then I change my voice to actually make it sound good when it's in that destructive mode. And I think for him, that surprised me. So I wasn't actually next to him. Brown was at the time. But I know when I told him to turn it up and I just started going off for like, you know, at least two minutes straight, just yeah. filling in gaps and really singing and doing different things. And I know Brown was kind of telling the story where he was kind of just interested in seeing how I did it. Right. And right. might not have ever seen nobody, you know, use a tool so improperly. Right. It's just like nah, nobody really does it that way. Right. Because um, he was he was at, he had like a certain like he was there. And I think, you know, when talent walks in the room, when you when especially when you put him on a mic. And he did the kind of the same thing too because he got he got uh we brought a singer that I've been using a lot and I like to mess with her a lot because she's just a humble person. Her, she goes by the name of Floor. She's on a lot of my records. She comes through. The floor. But yeah, shout out to Floor. Love you, girl. What she's dope, floor? man. This is one of the most humblest uh persons. Uh just good to work with, easy to work. Even Joe, even Joe's like, dude. So I took her to fingers. She like gets it then. Yeah. Professional. She, yeah. She went in there and he was like, yo, can I get your number? You know, like, well, I was like, yeah, get her number, whatever. We'll, we'll get his number, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And, but he knew like he brought talent, you know? So when, you know, she was in the booth, he was the same way. Like, wow. But he got in there and he was like, hey, I'm going to do this. And he like, it's just weird. I, I say, I like, and I gotta say, you, as a producer and engineer, we appreciate that shit. 1,000% when yeah. when an artist comes in and they know what the fuck they're doing, it makes yeah. our job 10 times easier. That is a fact. Yeah, because we, we you know, uh, the record that we had originally did was called uh, Mayweather Money, and he did the vocals, and he's, now nah, I ain't got no, and he's got more of a Nate kind of thing, and he yeah. could do any style. In my eyes, I'm like, this dude could do whatever. He can hit high notes if he wants to. But I said, okay, now I ain't got no Mayweather money. I sang the record to him, and I sent it to him through the you know iPhone, and I sent it to him. Mm. And so when he was there, he already knew the lyrics already. So when he went in the booth with Fingers, we're like, okay, cool. That's step one. So now we go step two, and then we get Norm Carter from the Delphonics, and, and I needed that. Now I ain't got no. I needed that falsetto. Right. So him in the background, now I ain't got. It really I sounds like a group, no you know. And it's just, it's crazy. You know, to hear it. even got Joe on the record too. La 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 la. It sounds like a whole group. Joe so this stop. is the Delphonics. You know, I'm like like Norm Carter. The Del- so I was like, I want it to sound like a group. So it went from his vocals to Little Green's vocals to to the Delphonics, and we created this record. And it's a fingers track. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he doesn't do the f- f- fingers on the track no more. So oh, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. He News flash. He- I didn't know oh, that. It wasn't on there, yeah, right? it wasn't, it wasn't on, on there. On there. Because I was like, it. I need that to, I need true. to f- f- fingers on the track, right? And to like stamp like, it. Everybody I really knows don't it. Do that no more. And I was like, oh, oh snap! So I was yeah, like, okay, right cool. Up. But this is after his, because when 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 I when I worked with fingers, I believe it was, what was he drinking this time? Because it was, used to be Pacificos. So I kind of already knew the whole the get down. You gonna get there? Nah, I don't want any drink. And then oh. Um, going to the store. Oh, maybe a six pack of Pacificos, and it, you know, and then this time too. So now it was a different drink, and I told, didn't I tell you? Brew. Yeah, yeah. I what said, was the drink? It well, was just like a lighter brew, like a light. Uh, I don't want to say Coronas, but it was Michelob, like a maybe? Maybe like a brew. ultra or what? Maybe Premier, yeah, something. Like but it was, Premier. but something once something we light. got started in the groove, then you know, my brother was like, "I'm gonna go," and then uh, my brother he came back and. Yeah, yeah, bring me that, and then it went from that to that. So by the next thing you know, he had to go to Vegas the next day because he was he was seller. Uh, maybe his birthday, his wife's birthday, I can't remember. Yeah, but then he had to go to Vegas, so we was already like pushing twelve already. Now I was like, hold up, we was keeping it. I was like, hold up, we got we did all this talk He's box on all these go. records that we did, and there was the 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 Superman, the Living Shady stuff. So I was giving. I need like if it had talk box on it back then twenty years ago, it need to have the fingers talk box right. on it this year. Of course. 
So I just, I was working that part of it, but he did some stuff for my son. Um, just, I mean, shout, I mean, shout out the fingers, man, because like I said, that day we really worked, but at the end of the day, we got two bangers out of the record. And, and for me, it's more of a, uh, it's not really what I spent. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, it boils down to what I want and what I wanted the album to sound like. And like I said, it's, it's all full circle. The, the new album, I'm trying, but I believe it will be out, uh, Mexican Independence Day, September. Music to cruise to. Um, it's I, I went back to the old school Brown Boy, the Brown Pride when Dope. I started. Yeah. And so, you know, obviously we got the record that we did. That's on there. I was about to bring that up. That's another one I missed when we were talking about earlier. But you recently dropped a video with you and I. It took about four years, but... Was it four or three? I felt like four. <laughs> but I was all know me and Moons were skinny back then. Oh, boy, I was all skinny. Five. I was all flock on Elijah. We just had a little baby girl. She was like fresh out the hospital. Yeah. Like, and now she's four. And I'm like, dang. She's just fresh out the hospital. You know what I'm saying? She still had the tags on her arm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said, come on, baby. You good? All right, let's go. We got to go shoot this video. We got to go to the No, party. but that was, uh, what was it called? The, 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 uh, the one with the homegirl, right? Do Singing. Remember? Do you remember? Do you uh, remember? People were vibing off that yeah, shit. Yeah, hundred percent. And there, a lot of people were waiting for it, but behind the scenes, like I said, I don't get very, uh, like I said, I don't. I'm not. I'm not in for the drama and all that stuff, you know. But I had to make sure, really, that I was cleared from everything that I was even doing. A little contract that I had with somebody. And oh, so just, you were like tied in? Yeah, and I just wanted to just really just like step away from it all to where. I knew they couldn't come back. And so when it when it got all done and cleared, I'm like, okay, cool. But, you know, realistically, oh, like I said, times change. You know, I'm older, I'm wiser, um, you know. And, and I know I, a lot of people say, like, you know what I'm saying, you can't love God and do music because you're doing devil's work. Well, well, I'm an entertainer. God gave me a gift. He gave this dude a gift. He gave you a gift. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. These are gifts that we're using. And so, you know, for me, even um, I got I got a song called Pain. That I did uh, with Rigo Luna. Shout out to Rigo Luna. Uh, but my pastor jumped on it, you know, and uh, he spoke on it. And it was just at a time that I was going through where I was feeling pain. And, uh, you know, I, I was like, I, I do everything. And people were like, oh, he's going Christian now. Or he's this. Not. Nah, man, I'm just doing music from my heart. You know, and pain was just a record that I was really going through pain. Like, I was like, I, I don't want to say questioning God, but I was like, dang, God, like, this is crazy. Like, this hurts. And so for me, it was like, if it's time for me to stop, let me know. But then he just like gave me more songs and more songs. So I was like, why would I stop? You know what I'm saying? And I feel like being an artist, that's being an artist. That's it's it's what you're going through at the moment. You know what yeah. I'm saying? This yeah. is what I like. There's some shit I probably wouldn't rap about 20, 30 years ago. But I mean, I was going through that at that time. Yeah. And I think people just like to. You know, throw daggers at you for yeah. it because, oh, homie, now he's trying to be that. No, I'm not trying. I'm still me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But how many Sunday afternoons you want? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, how many Supermans yeah. you want? Yeah. yeah. Like, let me grow as an artist. If this is what you like, cool. I'll come back around to that. You know what I mean? But for now, th th this is this is the way, you know, the man upstairs is leading me. Yeah. And music to cruise to, you know, even, you know, my brother gave me the idea. Shout out to my my brother YC, the photographer. See, I mean, you man. First of all, that dude. I'll tell you a quick story about my bro. So he he got into Is photography. Your older brother, huh? My older? younger brother. Younger brother. So he got into photography, right? He just like just real quick story. So he kept telling me, you know what? And my my nickname to my family, to my real friends that know me, know me, and stuff like that. They call me Darito. That's my my shout out to all my Darito. homies. Darito, Darito, Alex Lane, baby, A L G, Kiko, John, John. That's a T-shirt. Angelo, boo. baby D. Take the Haritos bomb, a fucking bottle, and just uh, change Darito. it with the D. <laughs> yeah, but he told me, hey, Darito. He, he actually <laughs> said, like, why don't you take it back to the the Brown Pride days, like with the OD, and like when you had that style, and in in a lot of people didn't know that. I had dropped an album with Capone way back when, when I was in college, uh, you know, Bundy, shout out to Bundy, Vic Cortado, you know, uh, all these cats played a role in, in this Superman thing that came over. But back in the days, you know, I linked up with you. You did an album back in the day with Capone? Yeah. Represent well, the Brown. Okay. That was the song. Taking it back was under me and you had taken it oh, back. Oh, okay. All right. All right. And That's what I, Capone was. He was yeah. He was yeah. still signing artists. Yeah. I remember. So I did that one album with him. 
And then that's when that's when I got when I did that stuff with him. I got introduced because that's when you guys had did that record. You introduced me to Capone. Then I linked up with him. We did some stuff. And then a lot of people don't know my first song on the radio was next to you. It wasn't Superman. It was next to you. When I'm next to you. Same girl that no sang shit. Superman. Loren Rose. Remember Loren? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She sang next to you. Shout out to Loren. Man, so, I remember that so well, I remember the title. And so that was on the album that I had did with them. And I just had did one album. And from there, you know, uh, a lot of people didn't know, you know, like Bundy, you know, uh, you know, he started it off and he was like, he, you know, I linked up with him. He was started funding, you know, my album. Now I was going to fingers and stuff. And, you know, fingers wasn't cheap back then either though. You know what I'm saying? So right. Bundy had like, I, I'm in college. I ain't got money like that. But he right. was like, go to the studio. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And there was a situation where he got, you know, he got busted or whatever, whatnot. And, uh, then my boy Vic or linked up with me, see me one day. And, uh, he was like, man, you dope, you cool. And stuff like that. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And, he, and he would just really go to fingers and I couldn't pay that bill. So my, my dog took care of it. And then that's when we met Cliff. Yeah. And then Cliff took us to, uh, uh, Luis Peasterman. And then we signed to Aries. I remember getting that check and I was like, he was like, let's go to the bank. He goes, this is how much I invested, took it, his cut, gave me my cut, put my money in the backpack. And I was like, yo, that's yeah. crazy. Backpack, that's how buddy. it was though. You know what I'm saying? Like you just like, I, I didn't know. I was like, yeah. what's going on? Cash under the table. And then from there, you know, what the trippy part is that, you know, that was when I was have I was about to have my newborn, my son, you yeah. know, and uh, you shout out to my son, Young DC, because he's producing and stuff like that. Yeah, Young DC. But, you know, it, it's it's crazy how time has gone, you know, from that day to this day now. But I, I'm I'm just grateful because I look at it, you know, 20 years later, we're still here, but I'm still I'm across from a dude that, you know, I looked up to. You know what I'm saying? And uh, when Bobby passed, um, you know, I would talk to him. We would talk on a regular or whatever. And, you know, just, you know. Yeah. And even at that time, I was kind of getting into, like, my faith a little bit and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And so I was I was, I was, was super sad because I wasn't going to be able to go to the funeral. Mm. And uh, because I had a show. So I told the dude, I said, look, man, my good friend passed away. Well, I got to, I got to, like, I'm going to have to, he's, if you cancel, I'm going to sue you. So I was at the airport, like, man, I was like, I was, I was, I was sad. I was at the airport, like, I got to go do this show. I'm at the airport. Boom. The things came up, flights canceled, boom, 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 boom. And I was like, so wait, so I, you can't, what are you going to sue me for? For the, I can't, right. can't make it. Yeah. I, right away, I jumped on the As long the as your contract says yeah. that's something like, brother, yeah. it's called a force, major, major, I can't even fucking, I just see that shit. Unforeseen. Says, unforeseen circumstances. circumstances, yeah. And so when that happened, I'm like, I'm taking shots of it. I'm like, look, dog, there, what do you want me to do? There's nothing that I can do. All right, screw it, we're going to reschedule it. Called my lady at the time and was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? We got to go. She came and I drove home and we we drove out all the way. I think it was like a five-hour drive out there. Yeah. And we went out there and I made it to the funeral. I think I didn't I don't I don't think I made when I think when he was talking, I think I made it the next day. All right. We was there and uh yeah, man. So that it, it I mean everything came full circle, man, to this day, man. And it's just a trip to be here and be like, dude, this like this the dude, like, you know what I'm saying? Cause nobody would n really, really like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, well they don't know. They don't yeah. see behind the scenes. They only see but see what they see on TV and then what they hear on radio. But one thing is that's you know, uh is is uh fascinates me man and i remember you used to do videos with your son like you were on instagram a lot yeah like uh i remember when he was younger you're old you're yeah. 20 or, uh he was younger and you were doing more you were more active on instagram yeah and uh i don't know whether it was a cooking video or whether it was you guys were just you just bonding so, yeah and i saw that because that's what i wanted for me and my son yeah or before i even had my son yeah and i was like shit i can't wait to have my son to do that, you know, and, and just to see you in your, in your, you know, in your comfort zone, it was dope. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, you had your shirt off a couple of times. I had to fucking, oh. so I had to, I had to scroll up. Oh. Over here. <laughs> you know, Brown likes to take with his shirt on like I this. Used to with the that. fucking chest up like this. And, What's up, guys? What's up? Hey. Hey, guys. Look at, look at, Whoa. Look at, 
No, but uh, <laughs> no, no, but then oh, and it, it was dope, you know. And then I also understand you, man. I heard you get down in the kitchen too. Yeah, I love to cook, man. And man, I, and what, where'd that come from? It bro? just, you know, I think, man, probably with the with the uh, the wifey. Just we be watching the cookie channels, like you know, what I'm saying we're watching cook, and I just got hyped. I was like, man, I'm gonna try that, and I started making on my own blends. Yeah, and, you were posting you know, and, it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's where I found so, out. To this, I mean, I I I, I, I slowed down on it, but I still get down. I do. He was there cooking with no shirt on. <laughs> Shabibi, Shabibi, Shabibi. Yeah, pepperonis Shabibi. out. Yeah, the pepperonis <laughs> out. Hey, you know it's funny you talk about food though, because er, you know ever since we've been at, on our journey. Like every time I talk to him, every single time. I know. I don't care spot. what city, I don't care what state, I don't care what corner of the w- world we're at. He's like, man, I got this spot. It got the best. When we taco, land, let's the go. The best food. I know. You know where every restaurant's at type I, shit? Yeah, every uh, time. I don't care every where city. We're at. Hey, we where just we're in at? Dallas and we, my brother put us up on one, and I was like, I don't know about that. He was like, Capitol Grill. And I was like, eh. And cause he, he, cause you know, he a paralegal too. He does photography, he does all that stuff. But you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't really ask him about his finances, but I'm like, ding dong. Like, oh, I've ate at this Capital Grill and this Capital Grill and that one. And I'm just like, steak. I was like, no, what did you look at the menu? And we're all looking at each other. Like, steak. damn dog. But he, he wasn't lying though. It was, it was top notch. Like on steak. some like Morton's type shit or. Um, Fleming's yeah. type yeah. shit, or you yeah. said steak, right? Yeah. Okay. It was a spot like that, but it was fire though. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. But I'm always up on game, but I can always go back to you know. Shout out to all my people out there in Albuquerque, Burke. Yeah. I lo- I mean, I think New Mexico, you know, they right up there with the the best foods, you know. So, with that being said, what's the best? Uh, what's the what's your uh, spot to go to? What state has like the fire Mexican food? We'll start Man. there. I, I'm gonna have. Yeah. I mean, I say New Mexico. I love New Mexico. Over like, Cali. I mean, I probably might get some hate for it. Yeah, but I mean, I have. I mean, man, that chili just hits different. The, the chili, I was gonna say, Colorado that has a lot to do too. with it. Yeah, Colorado, the Colorado chili. Yeah. Hey, let's not leave chili Arizona out. Yeah. I think both of you not to leave Arizona out. Man, man. Arizona, man, when you come out, spot. we're gonna go to some spots. Okay, for there sure, was a 100%. no. There was a spot we tried to go to, and it wow. was like there, there was people there. They was like, I'm, I'm, I'll wait two hours to eat yeah. this month. The and I was, was like, I'm not, hours. I'm hungry. Yeah, what spot is that? What was that I'm one spot? The name. And the AZ. But it's I know the, we went. There was people the outside. You walk in. Comador. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I and I still bro. need to try that spot because I was like, there's people here for a reason. They were outside. Out the door. It's you walk like in. There's too. people there, and you walk into another, and there's people wait. Yeah. She was like, us. Oh, That's when you know it's fire. Like people just wait. Two hours and shit. One of my favorite, yes. favorite, favorite, favorite spots, man, honestly, man, is from my hometown, Black California, but they shut it down. La Casita Dos. Ooh, man, boy. Yeah. I walk the in, they already knew what I wanted. I didn't even, I, I didn't even order. I just, they, el mismo? Yeah. Yup. <laughs> and it, their what chips happened? Just also. Time just got tough. They just, they just yeah. sold it. Yeah. I think like, I don't know, just Pandemic stuff. But yeah, that, that, when I got the news on that, I, I ain't gonna lie, I was bummed out because if I go to Black, I rarely go to Black now. I still got family there, but my, you know, my grandma passed away. Yeah, and uh, that was the key. Like, you know, would go down, and you know, see Nana and 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 uh, hang out with the cousins and stuff like that. And now it's just kind of like, you know, my my mom's and pops is older. Um, my dad went through a situation that, like I said, I went through a, a moment in time where I was like, I like I said, it was a dark, very dark time. Right, and that's why you know I. I before I leave the stage, you know, I always say, man, all glory to God. I, I silence the crowd and I say, look, you guys, like. I'm not no famous guy. I don't need to be fair. I'm not, you know, nothing, none of that, man. I'm a regular human being just like you guys, but all glory to God because through that dark time, man. And that's, that's another thing that I have with him as a relationship. we got a lot of similarities, but we get to talk about certain stuff, you know, his parents, I've, I've met his parents. Like, you know, I, like I, me and his pops is like, I, his pops is cool. I love his pops. Yeah. You know? But also his mom, the way they support him and stuff like that. They, like they come out and when I see them, it's like, well, it's just a connection, you know, right. His, his friends are like now my friends, but his circle of people is so small, but so tight. And they, they support this dude. And I said t- to me, it's like this. Oh, if I, I, I'm, I'm shocked why this dude is not on another level, but to all you rappers out there, you really want bangers or you want a hit record. Bam. Right here. Well, I mean, you know how it goes. Just sometimes yeah. they need that extra push or that they need that, that introduction, you know what I'm saying? I mean, look, you guys are here. 
now, you know. He already hooked up with you. You came here, you know what I'm saying? Now, if I if I got some artists, you know, I, I introduce you to, you know, some artists or other legends in the game, you know, yeah. that's the way it works. You know how the network works, bro. And but I just figure he's just he's away. That's kind of where, and that's kind of where I was at. I've been, I just been making music. That's all I do. That's all I know. I was twelve years old. Why they went and played basketball and then played ditch them and walked around the neighborhood. I was in my mom's garage making music. So why would yeah. my, my thing know. is why so wouldn't you want this dude to blow you know? up? Like, yeah. you know, so that's where I've been my whole life. So it's crazy. It's like, that's even why I coming over here, the, I'm the like, hate, I'm going to. The I'm hate though, LSO that this dude. Go, yeah, that was exciting to me. You know what I mean? Meeting like, him, it was crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I couldn't understand. Like, why would you try to block this dude out of the game from doing what this dude is supposed to do? This is his gift. He's really that dope. And, and, and I tell people, look, I don't try to hype him up like that. It just, once you locked in, oh, it's a, it's a vibe. It's a whole different thing. Right. You get to see what he does. But I think he said it best. He said. Right now, if, if you go back, he said, and if you're likable. Yeah. And that's the whole, that's the, that, that, Everywhere that's I take it boils dude. down. You could be the best of the best. Yep. If you're not respectful, if you're not likable, if you're not sociable, if you think you're, you're, you're at a higher level than somebody yeah. else, uh, that, that to me is, is a no go. Stall me out you with all I mean? that. Yeah, I'm good. Fucking Hollywood you know? and, I've, and I've ran into that, that shit too. You know what I mean? So I think you said it best right there. And that's for me, I, I mean, I, I have the utmost respect for everybody. Everybody gets that chance to, to meet and that's that's my energy that I bring yeah. my vibe and my friends you know, they'll get are you friends. a lot further just uh, know that hundred percent that even if you're not that good it's gonna get you further it's I've worked with you. artists I'm telling you that were the hardest people to record Dang. the hardest people to coach I've coached them word for word I've done it but you know what I do it because there was like a humbleness to them right so I'm gonna I'm gonna put forth my energy where right. I know a lot of places they would go it's to it's like you want them to win it. just because of the person they yeah, are that hungriness it's like going to a fucking like you said any business you go to a restaurant hey man the food may have sucked but that waiter was the shit yeah, yeah. the like, service dude, is always she good, or though. he was dope yeah I'm gonna tip her make sure you keep this and that you know that'll yeah. go to the house Type shit because yeah. that that goes a long way. But you know the way we were raised, yeah. bro. I mean, I heard you say somewhere like growing up. I know you got your brother and and, and other siblings. I don't. Do you have other siblings? Yeah. And, and your dad, your pops, just kind of raised you a certain way. I mean, he would he would give you the whooping, man. You know, we, we from the Ooh, old school. They wouldn't boy. play around, you know. And I think I heard you see somewhere where your dad. Uh, May he came to you one day and was like, "Yo, man, I, I didn't mean to be so hard on you or type shit." Yeah. You were like, "Nah, dad, that would, that I Can't fucking learned from prison. that." Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Look at you. You know he he brought you to God. He brought you. You know I I could at least say, dude, by knowing you for all these years, you've always been a a, a solid, humble dude, and I yeah. think that's a, a big part of why you're here. That comes you know that comes yeah. from being still, raised in Blythe you know. because you know. To this day, I still talk to my childhood friends, people I graduated with, man, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we still, we don't talk every day, but I tell you right now, those dudes are in my heart. Uh, shout out to Kiko, Angelo, John, John, Baby D, you know what I'm saying? Um, our block was Alice Lane, but, you know, a lot of people will trip, you know, because one of my, my closest friends is African-American. Like, you know, I still fly to, you know, when I go to El Paso, I touch down with them and we link up and we have dinner and I get to go. Matter of fact, uh, shout out to Al J. Martin, BYU. I'm not even into football like that, <laughs> but that's a product of Did like. Did I say the letters right? <laughs> yeah, BYU, because now nah, he plays he plays for BYU. Okay. And uh, I get excited because now me and my boys. Do you boys, know what BYU stands for? Brimham Young he University. Said Brimham. Some, some, something. <laughs> but hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey, he got his own jersey, but I tell you right now, this kid is going to the NFL, but that comes from his dad, who I grew up with. And I go to his crib and stuff. I'm like, damn, Jay, you're doing it nice. You know what I'm saying? But his son, the way he raised them, I mean, I mean, you see, I seen the dude on like ESPN, and they're like, well, you know, some about, you know, they kind of like interviewed him, I mean, just another humble dude. Right. I love it. And I'm like, yeah. man, you know, so it's 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 a lot of stuff that we was raised and stuff like that. But a lot of people think like even, well, how do you get the brown pride in Chicano? And I was telling you earlier, my godfather and my dad, you know, they grew up in San Diego. So when, uh, you know, and I forgot to mention Aztec tribe because my my Nino put me up on Aztec tribe back in the Shout days. Shout out to Rudy and the crew. And then, uh, and then that's how I got into Little Rob, you know, at that age. And I think Little Rob was young back then too. But that's why I listened to it. But my, my Nino is Ramon Chunky Sanchez, the Los Alecranes. 
that's one of the founding fathers of that whole thing. Shout out to my Nina Isabel. Chicano uh, Park. Yeah, Chicano Park, you know. And so I was at the celebrations. My dad and them would drop me off for the summers and I'd be kicking it with that's my Nina. That's crazy. So I learned that also, you know, but my dad was also he's in books standing right next to Cesar wow, Chavez. Wow, that's like, nuts. You know, Brown that's Beret, beautiful. like with his suit on and everything. And so people like that's when people Tell me back in the day, how did you get brown, boy? Well, back in the days when I, I couldn't grow facial hair at all, nothing. So, you know, I'm walking around like, hey, everybody, like, you know, and I was cool, you know what I'm saying? But I still look like a boy, but every time in, like, I was in class, I knew about the culture. So I'm going to speak on, you know, when uh, the pilgrims, I was like, wait, hold up, hold up. And I'll start spitting, like, you know, nah, you know, and people are like, man, well, you represent you call the your brown. Teachers out. Yeah, they're like, you represent the brown. And, that, and then so just brown, he's down for the brown. Brown, and he, he just looks like yeah. a boy. He's just like brown boy. And it, from there, it just stuck, bro. And it just, I'm brown boy. Like, there I'm like, cool. That's like, dope. You know That's saying? a dope story. I didn't know that. Trip out though, you know what I'm saying? Shit. And uh, and it's crazy because one of the homies that is not Chicano, not Mexican, it was like, dude, you represent Harford, you know, the Mexicans and da da da. So yeah. brown, you down for the brown? And did he, you ever get get labeled a type of rapper? Like, did anybody ever call you? Are you Chicano rap? Or what do you consider yourself? I consider myself a entertainer. You know, I entertain. Um, because I just showed you a country swag record I did. So I, I'm did. a songwriter. He's a songwriter. We're all songwriters in a right, but there's melodies and creations. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? So I can't, I mean, how do you I call, like that. I like the I, fact that you didn't just put yourself in a box and even just say I'm hip hop. Yeah. Entertainer used. Yeah. That's all genres. We go, per, we go too. perform. That's fire. Right. We go perform. I, I, I think, uh, you know, um, I think when uh, I think they interviewed Snow the product sometime and they were like some they mentioned some about Chicano rap or something. And she said she's not that or whatever. And, you know, and, you know, but MC from what I remember, like I remember MC Magic putting her on a record and it, on his album. I think I can't remember what album it was, but he put her on and, then you know, she you know, she took off, you know. Yeah. But do you call her Chicano rap? Is she no. Chicano rap? It's nah. like when Dr. You know? Dre, I, I heard this story before years back when they when Dre made his move from the Wrecking Crew and he went over and it became the, the chronic man. And, you know, Eze, e rest in peace, you know, obviously he would point him, point his flaws, not flaws, but his, because they used to wear makeup in the rec wrecking crew, remember? Yeah. And oh, they would yeah, make yeah. fun of him. And yeah. then all of a sudden, he's the chronic man. Yeah. And they had asked Drake in an interview, uh, excuse me, Dre, Dr. Dre, um, uh, how do you respond to that? And he says, look, man, he goes, what I do is entertainment. He used the same word. Yeah. I'm entertaining you fools. Regardless of what, think of me what you want. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't know, man. It might be different for one of us to to put on a fucking black hat and, you know, mad doggers and, yeah. you know, th throw a rag over our shoulder and, and say we're not gangbangers. That's a, I don't know. That's a different story. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dre was doing chronic shit, you know. But then he was in NWA, too. Yeah. That was before Chronic. I just skipped the whole thing. Yeah, he went from Record Crew to NWA, and that's what he got called out for. But he was like, yeah, but what I do, I'm still from Compton. He's all, but what I do is entertainment. So anyway, I just thought that related to what you were saying, bro. I, I, I mean, right now at this stage in life, man, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just doing music. I'm enjoying music, doing music, and I want to just create. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, the, that's the main thing. Is that my phone? My phone over there, though. Money moves fell asleep, dog. He fell asleep for a second. <laughs> Shit, we got we got a uh, we got a house full. We got a, a backyard full of people right now, man. You guys won't even know that, but we had to step away. You see, we're in chanclas and shorts, man. Don't even come for us. We see the comments. We see the comments. We're, we're, it's supposed to be a backyard barbecue, but I said I got a brown boy here, man. I'm getting this interview, so um, yeah, we definitely want to. Uh, where, where are we at right now? Uh, hour and six minutes. All right, cool. We'll wrap it up in, in a few, but finish what you were saying, though, man. No, I just, you know, I just, I want to create, man. I'm on a different path, you know, and uh, we're, we really are living in these kind of weird times, evil, a lot of hating, a lot of jealousy, a lot of everything. And like I told you, man, um, the, you know, at some point, man, you know, we'll chop it up. But I was, you know, like I said, you know, I always get asked, what about Les Rye? You know, I do. 
Like, you know, I was going to ask you, aside of, uh, not to cut you off, but aside of Superman, what's your next biggest record, you, would you say? When I look at the royalties and stuff like that, it please don't go. So, like, oh, I, I could tell. Right. So, please don't go charted also, too. Just Superman charted way up there. It's hard to get a record like that, you know, because I still got the Billboard magazines. You know, uh, Puff Daddy, Justin Timberlake, uh, Chingy, uh, all these things, Pitbull, and then Brown Boy. You're like. That was a big record, what bro. What the, like, like way up there, t- like number nine. It yeah. reached number nine. And I'm like, wow. And then, you know, how do you follow that up? And then we had Please Don't Go. Shout out to Melissa Lujan, uh, Denver, Colorado native, you know what I'm saying? But right. she did, did, that record actually was sang by Loren Rose first. Right, okay. And then we got her, and then uh, shout out to Adelio Lombardi, who's, you know, he's big in the record game now. He used to manage me and took call. I just got a phone call. He's like, bro, quick story on that. Just, hey, bro, like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, man, you got to come to Denver. He's like, I was like, well, I got money to go to Denver. You know what I'm saying? He was like, yeah. you got one of the biggest records. That guy structured my whole uh, career when it came to doing shows and what I need to get paid for. Because he was just like the homies call me up. Oh, Brown Boy's on the radio. Woo, woo, I'm going to book him. Shoot, shoot, shoot me a thousand, fool. I'm down. And this fool said, dude, no. Nobody calls you no more. You go through me, went out to Denver. And I'll tell you right now, man, that dude done made me a lot of money. A mm. lot of money. And I could tell you right now that, that when he managed me, he didn't take not one penny from me. I tried to give him money one time. He said, no. But now he's an executive. I believe that... Uh, I actually introduced him to Fingers, then Fingers introduced him to somebody at Atlantic. Yeah. But he always had, when I would go, he has a uh, Side 3 Studios in Denver. If you look at that, I mean, T Pain, Bow Wow, Kanye West, they all been in his studios. He's one of the only studios that rotates in Denver. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he he's some big executive now for Atlantic, you know. And I've reached out to him and go, hey, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? But a dope, dope person. And uh, he, that at, at that time, uh, Melissa Lujan was that was her fiance, and he got her. And he's like, "Let's do, please don't go with Melissa on it." And that's, but that came to record. We shot that in uh, Denver, that video in Denver. Man, you look at that video, bro. I was eating steak and scrimp, boy. <laughs> I was big. <laughs> I <just Wasn't> scrimp. <laughs> yeah, I was, he was at big. Capitol Grill popping. We had Carmelo Anthony's. Uh, he let us use one of his whips because he knew Carmelo. Uh, I remember one time going to a Denver Nuggets game. I was right there, like it was crazy. I'm like, dude, I'm. And people, my phone started blowing up. Hey, dog, where you at? I was like, oh, I'm in the, are you at a basketball? I was right there on TV. Like, when they shoot the ball, I was like, wow. you know, and I was out there trying to get on. That's called court side. Tortas. Four <laughs> on the No, left. like, literally right there. Um, he took me on his uncle's private jet. We flew to Vegas um, on a private jet. Yeah. You know, so what's he, up? You don't talk to dude no more. No, or? I mean he's, I mean he's on a whole different thing. But you yeah. know, the last time I talked to him, he had mentioned that, like, I asked him about LA because he's got producers under him too. But uh, anyways, he just said like, Nah, man. He goes, I, I, LA is a place, you know, realistically where you go and sell your soul type stuff. Yeah. So he likes where he lives at. He's in Denver. He bought a, you know, big spot. But I'm pretty sure, you know, I. I would assume he's a millionaire. You know what I'm saying? That's he's right. Doing good, but also I don't think money makes that dude because he's still just a yeah regular dude. He's a good dude, man. Goes and, back uh, to what we were saying word, earlier. Yeah, just that, that humbleness, word, man. Humble is, uh, so well, shout outs to dude, man, and shout outs to you, bro. What what else you got cracking? I mean, I mean, besides sh- all these beats, I know I'm about to <laughs> you know rap on a couple more verses here. Yep. I think I did got one with your son, and then you got another one with this guy right here, David. Um, Talk about it real quick, man. What else? I know you said you mentioned the country record. We just, we just, we're Are y'all just dropping working. an album we're, yeah, together? We're, we're, we're doing an album together. And we, we it's not like we're, we, we just, I have so many songs and it's just, we keep creating. All right. And uh, it just sounds good. It sounds good. But uh, music to cruise to is going to be the first one up. And that's really taking it back, which my, I was telling you, YC, my brother, said, you got to go back to the the ODM Brown Pride days, the, the night I was when he was doing that kind of stuff, that flavor. And I noticed that it worked. Okay. And the fans. And so, it, as you see, the last couple years, uh, Lowrider has got me on these shows and said, man, wow, Superman but you brought a whole lowrider experience and a lot of it is because of him. He's on stage with me, but because of the records that we got and it's just that music, but I'm also coming back with just more records where, uh, I'm just getting a whole bunch of different artists on them. I got a uh, album called soul radio presents, which is just, 
me and a bunch of artists that you probably might not heard of and just but you that's know, dope you're bringing them out yeah i'm putting them on dope i'm writing the stuff um jokes jokes loves life um i just did an od kind of record with him i wrote he was like bro you like you wrote the whole singing part and i can't sing so he goes in and he sings it right his way so he was like you really pin and i was like yeah i do but at the end of the day man music is my therapy man you know i re you know I, I got my bachelor's degree i've been working for the government for you know going on 12 years you know, and, 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 and what I want to let people know is that, man, you know, don't ever let nobody know, oh, he works. Or, well, I, bro, I got a 401k. I got life insurance. My family is good. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I don't care about the other stuff. I don't care to be rich and all that stuff. I'm glad you brought that up, too, because I was going to ask you that, you know, uh, another reason why maybe we don't see you out there. You choose to stay home. Yeah. And not go on the road or whatever yeah. because you're good, like you're secure with which a lot of artists need to understand that this isn't forever. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can make it forever. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. we're all going to get older. You, you Hopefully, you know, if you plan on staying in the music busy, either you become a CEO, record label, somebody of top tier status to keep that going and get knowledge on, on that. Or, you know, you, you become a government worker, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, or, I you mean, know, I got, you know, like, tell me, dude, check out, like. Something outside the business. You're, you're, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people are like, oh, he used to be a teacher. Yeah. This was right before Superman blew up. Like, what'd you want me to do? Let my newborn starve? I, you know, I have a degree. I'm talented, you know, not only talented, but I'm smart. And it was just like, to all the, you know, we live in a time of facade. You know, the internet is a facade. It's social media is a facade. You, people post their trophy moments. You know, but no one wants to talk about the bad times and everything like that. Right. One day, I believe, you know, because when I met with my pastor one day, he said, I was so concerned with making Brown Boy famous. Like, Brown Boy, it was all about me, all about me, until I looked in the mirror. And when he talked to me, I had a good talk with him. Shout out to Pastor Obed, man, because, I mean, shh, yeah, this dude brought a church to Indio, and I, I got locked in, and, and he said, man, I sat down with him one day, um, and this is years ago. And he said, stop trying to make Brown Boy famous and make him famous and watch how your life changes. And boy, did it. It really did. So now it's, it's a different purpose, man. But, you know, even there's some cats out there trying to block me from doing shows and stuff like that. And I'm like, OK, I still every two yeah. weeks, you got to understand I get a check. So I don't I don't want to go out on the road all the time. I really enjoy spending time with my wife and sure. my kid. Yeah. And just watching, you know freaking 90 day fiance and love and hip hop. Like I enjoy that. I enjoy the times I'm not doing shows, but I pick and choose, you know, the ones I do. That's right. Well, and let's understand what riches are. First of all, right. What are the riches we're going to miss out on trying to chase? Right. Right. I was a True. hustler for a long time and it's not forever. Right. That's right. It's very rare. And it's the same thing. And maybe that was wrong hustling, but when you think about it's still a hustle, right? It can last forever, but what other riches are you gonna miss out on? I'm rich and the rich. Kids, yeah. Yeah. I'm rich and rich. That's Call me right. Richie Rich. That's right. I got old school cars that you know. It's not like I have all the money in the world, but I got them. They're like my dream cars. Yeah. I got a, a dream Jeep. I never thought I have. I got all this stuff, and I'm like, they just you know what I mean. So yeah. that's why for me, it's like, well, this guy's not out. I know he tells me all the time you got to be out there. And for me, it wasn't that wasn't my chase. I came from hustle the world to doing music my whole life. And His story's that, crazy. That's kind of where I've been, Ooh. you know what I mean? And and it's like, I didn't, man, I look back. At, I'm a fisherman. And I go fishing all the time. Mm. It's a it's a thing in my family, you know what I mean? For my dad to go and for me to go spend time with my pops. I, I got a little fishing boat. We go out. We go mob out. Fish all night. That's rich to me. Uh. Those memories are rich to me. I'm good with that. Not yeah. a, I don't ever see that. I don't see that. Go to my page. You'll see fish on there. That's all, an interesting all day. point, man. You know they, I mean? they say, what's rich to you? You just define that. That's being rich. They say, what's gangster? Gangster is doing kind of the same thing, raising your family. Raising they your say family. like the hood. What's hard, the best man. hood? Fatherhood. Fatherhood. Yeah. Getting you know in trouble saying? for me was easy. Yeah. That was the easy part. Hustling, getting in trouble, that adrenaline every day, turning it. I, I, you know, caught a felony at a time for me, and it was tough. Got into the corporate world. That was even tougher because I had a felony. And, yeah. you know, you move around, and then you think, like, man, what what am I doing? Right. What am I missing out on? Experience. Now I look back, yeah. and, you know, even with my older son, I wish a lot of things were different. But now I have my youngest, and I'm like, man, there was a lot of riches I missed out on when he was younger because I, right. I was a different age myself. And, and that when you talk about music and the longevity for it, 
it, it can be temporary, right? But then you could do for others. So right. for me, right, luckily I do have different hats and I could engineer till I'm 80, 90. I mm -hmm. could do all these productions and different things. Um, but I'm not going to miss out on riches for shows for nobody. Oh, real quick before I forget, man, thanks for uh, blessing my stage, man, on my birthday party at Killer Queens, man. It was an honor, man. Your it boy turned honor. 25. I, 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 25. You know, again, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, single. <laughs> yeah. Going backwards. Appreciate like you, it. man. For, is there anything else you want to push, man? I mean, I mean, the music's going to come out. It's going to do what it does. Um, every Friday, I'm dropping a new single, new you song. You have been dropping them. Been, like, yeah. Left it's and been, right. I think yeah. Two, it's been two months now. Yep. And uh, we starting to get ready on King David. We're going to start doing his stuff. He's got That's his right. new single, Happy. Um, he, man, it's just really, man, whatever's going to come my way. I feel like this, man, whatever God's going to bless me with going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Um, and like I was saying, man, it, it's a blessing to be here. It's full circle for me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, even though Bobby's gone, you know what I'm saying? I'm still, like I said, I'm here with ODM, Lighter Shade of Brown. That's what I grew up on. And, uh, it's an honor. And uh, like I said, man, I'm just going to, you know, I like I said, I stay away from the drama, stay away from all that, man. I'm yeah. doing good. And I wish everybody well. You know, I wish the 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 music game for us was different, that we, we all really supported each other and got along. I know that's that's a long shot, but, you know, I'm a fan of it all, you know, from the MC Magics to Baby Bashes to Little Robs and all that, whether they, you know, some cats don't want to work with some cats. And, you know, I've reached out to, you know, a certain somebody, you know, I'm like, man, I think the fans would love it. And, you know, for whatever reasons, I hear a bunch of different, it's excuse to me, it's excuses, you mm -hmm. know, right. but, but, but we, but we could talk about Rasa and Brown pride and be mm -hmm. united, yeah. but uh, I won't support this guy right. who, you know, come on, you're going to tell me that the fans is out, man. Come on. So, life's too short. We got, yep. you know, d d that's why I say, you, you know. got to like each other, but damn, you know, be civil at least. Yeah, and I'm like, hey, oh, I mean, what, I mean, you know, what, I mean, to me, just think about it, you know, like, a, just in my mind, I think, you know, a lot of shit of Brown featuring a, you know, a, a Little Rob record or, you know, like that, crazy, or even a MC Magic Little Rob, you know, a lot of shit of Brown record, like, just crazy stuff, you know what I'm saying? I, I think of that, that's why I always like to collaborate, and like I said, thank you, man, because you bless uh, my son, it's a bucket list for me. To, to to work on my son's album Heck and yeah. then uh king dave i know he's gonna mix it and do everything to it but we're doing another record too and you know me you king david and uh, it's just a full circle moment for me being That's here right. on the podcast ultimately at the end man the last thing i would say man first of all the quick shout outs for for my boy david man for like i said the relationship that we have and i just want to continue to just thrive and just do stuff shout out to money because money be jumping on the stuff money too moon. you know what I'm saying? money yes, moons yeah. got them bars on them but mm. you know his his uh friends and family are my friends and family uh t-ray you T know Ray, what I'm saying? Teddy, Teddy, Travis, Travis. You know, these are all boys that I met through him. That's and, right. And uh, those are my homies now, too. Uh, shout out to Mike Hurtado, uh, my boy Chris out there in New Mexico. I want to shout them out because Circle is super small. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But these are definitely homies of mine. I look at, like, family, even, like, my little bro, to be able to go on the road with him. The dude, real like, that story I was going to tell you real quick, when he picked up a camera... And when I got married, he was like, let me shoot you. I said, boy, he wanted to shoot my wedding, like, pictures. I'm like, but then again, I was like, someone's trying to charge me 2500 And he was like, let me do it. Do you trust me? And I'm like, I do, but if you mess this up, why yeah. are you going to go <laughs> off? Yeah, like, a chance to make this happen. Yeah. But he, you yeah. know, the thing is, is that he came through and he did it. And th the pictures were amazing. Dope. And now this dude is thriving in his thing. And it's just a circle of people. And that's why I said, man, if anything, man, I look forward to 2025. I feel like. It's going to be a good year. I feel like God's going to bless us. But also, you know, like I said, man, it, I think the fans, a lot of shit brown, brown boy, you know, some other artists or whatever, you know what I'm saying, to put a little something out out there and hit, hit the road on a little brown pride tour or brown, you know, yes, brown sir. proud. It, it's just, like I said, it's those moments that I look forward to. I pray those up, man. But at the end of the day, all glory to God, man, because without him, you know, these changes in my life, I ain't nobody ever going to be perfect. We cannot be perfect. Yeah. But, you know, with him, I feel like I'm working on myself. And that's why I wish all them dudes good, whether they want to work with me or not or block me from shows. And this, I wish them all good. I, I, I hope your families are thriving. You're spending time with your kids and doing all that good stuff because that's what it's about. I mean, I got to see your son right now, Elijah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And it's 
man, it's crazy, man. We grown now, bro. And it's a beautiful thing. So thank you for having me on your podcast, no man. Doubt. And Hey, yes, it's a blessing, bro. Thank Make you. Make sure you guys follow Brown Boy. You guys follow King David. We got some more music to do. Matter of fact, we're going to eat first because there's a barbecue happening right now. But other than that, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that fat ass like right there. Make sure you share this. We got Brown Boy on the Blackout Podcast. Hey, we'll catch you on the next one. Mm-hmm.